previously on the Dragon Prince. Every one of these men and women would gladly trade their life to save yours. Would you, Vera? Nope. Not at all. Chapter 3, Moonrise. So we got the invasion. We also have the three of them maybe embarking on their journey. And we have the king, ultra conflicted, and maybe ready to die. But you got Sora and you'll be good. Dramatic walking intensifies. Nice, he's getting ready too. The guards are not enough. This may be the end. Oh, who gives the best bird kisses? Pip does. All right, 10,000 points for the king for being an animal lover. The bird's a little bit creepy though, not gonna lie. He's no Bosco. On the other hand, he gives the best birdie kisses. King Harrow is a principled man. You mean stubborn. The way he said principled, yeah. Tongue. He insisted I stand next to him for the painting. Because he knew I would stand by him through anything. And you have. So far. Ooh. So I don't know the full extent of it yet, but definitely to some extent his loyalty is wavering. And it makes it extra sad that they used to be friends. Very close friends. They obviously loved each other a great deal at one point. But whatever circumstances they've been through has created a rift. I need to be the man he once believed I was. Okay, that's reassuring. There's one more thing I can do to convince him. Goodbye. Claudia. That was ominous. Yeah, there's a lot of weirdness with this guy, like the mirror. He's obviously not happy. He wants to do things the king doesn't agree with. But even though this scene shows there's obviously some credit to that, I feel like slightly more encouraged by his character. <laughs> that jelly played a really important plot role. Why wasn't it destroyed? Because my father saved it. Claudia! Oh, she knows? My father took it to protect us, Callum. Yes, bring that thing here. It's not a thing. It has a mother, and it needs to go back to her. <laughs> I'm like Callum right now. Follow me. Whoa. Oh, no, Callum. <laughs> this girl. Wow, big move. You just blew your shot. Not that you ever had one. That puts Claudia in a whole new light. She's complicit in this? Weird. I was expecting her to be surprised by the egg and then be on board with the whole thing. But nope. What about Soren though? Yep, just gonna summon my dark wolves. Oh, can he use magic? Is he gonna learn? Wow. There might be something I can do, but I don't know if I can do it. Damn, good memory. I can't even remember what I had for breakfast this morning. This guy's remembering rune spells. Just do it! Kyle, I'm smarter than me. It's pretty good for his first try. Nailed it. You never mentioned you were a mage. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> he just did magic. Yeah, that's what a mage is. Nice. You're a mage. That's awesome. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. I'm a mage. I'm a mage! That's cool. And it's cool that he found something because he's so inept at sword fighting and horse riding and armor wearing and women. But he's good at magic. That's cool. You just gotta follow your gifts. So, what's in the basket? This guy loves apples. I am prepared to do anything to protect the king. Anything. I hope you will understand. Why does everything he, sa he says sound so ominous? He doesn't have to put it that way. Just trust me. Hey, right? That makes sense. Since we go way back. Like that one time, ten minutes ago, when you chased me through the castle trying to stab me? Any moment now, others will be arriving. Others like me. Right. And one thing credible about what she's saying is that, I mean, she could just kill them. There's nothing stopping her. They're not... I mean, I don't know if Ezra, maybe he has some, like, hidden power, but we haven't seen it yet. The toad can get really bright, but, I mean, she's kind of, you know, she's being nice here. I'll take you to the room. I'm getting a really good vibe about the three of them. Like, Rila seems super cool and kind. Callum, obviously smart, funny. Ezra seems super chill. 
Like, he seems like he has his own thing. I don't know how to explain it. He's, like, super secure, if that makes sense. Like, for someone so young, he just seems so, like, strong as a person. And he's principled for a kid. I think of you as my brother. You will know your place. And where exactly is that place? On your knees. Damn, he's on a trip right now. You can at least hear the guy out. You are a servant. Oh no, that's... I feel like that was a big mistake. Now the moon elves are not your biggest danger. This guy's already sort of on the fence about how he feels about this whole thing. That actually did feel like he was making an honest attempt and the king kind of stamped it out. I mean, it is obvious that, that the guy is a little bit too familiar with him, right? Like, I think it was in episode one. He barged into his room while the king was sleeping. But it feels like that was a missed opportunity for something great. I wonder what he was going to suggest. The king is just not, like, he's not handling this well. I mean, that's understandable, right? Because he's, in his mind, he's about to die. But that's one of those tragic things. It's like when you, the audience, know that something good can potentially happen, but there's a misunderstanding or miscommunication. Hurts, man. The egg wasn't destroyed it was stolen their high mage was going to use it for dark magic but the human princess found it tell him humans are liars oh no what she's telling you is true people in the show need to listen to each other more this is a miracle a chance for peace the humans struck down the king of the dragons callum ezran go cool oh they're their full power now awesome nice touch it's beautiful i will kill you Probably. <laughs> That's great. I'll go talk to the king. Callum, why don't you just call him dad? I think he would want you to. That's nice and all, but maybe this is not the best time. You're better than this. No, not really. You've had about 20 years more training. Not your fighting skills. Mm -hmm. I mean your character. <laughs> I love his weapon. You stole the egg of the dragon prince. Oh no, now you just made him yourself an enemy. Grab him. But he's the prince. Do it! I'll call out! I'll scream! <sighs> he just took his voice? It's messed up, dude. Okay, Ursula. I like that Soren didn't participate in that. Every time I see them together, I, I get the feeling that Soren really loves Callum. But it also seems like he knows about the egg. And now also the soldiers know about the egg. I guess it's not as big of a secret as I thought it would be. This one's not so good at hiding. I told him that. Uh, where's your brother? He went up to the tower to see our dad. It's the worst place to be. You impudent little mongrel. Damn, I can talk to the prince like that. And given everything. And that has left you weak and helpless. Tonight your world is changing. There is nothing you or anyone can- Sounds like he's just capitulating to the elves. They're here! I like how Sword, Sword's protecting Callum. I don't know why I love their relationship so much. Damn, they're as good as they say, I guess. Nice, he got his voice back. Did Soren just catch that attack? Damn, that's a tough choice. There's nothing much you can do here, though. Damn. That's crazy. That was an awesome scene. The advisor is basically pointing out to him that he's ineffectual. There's nothing he can do in the situation to help or change anything. And then like he's in the hallway and everyone's fighting and he's watching like his mentor Sora do battle and he's watching soldiers die and his father's right there but there's nothing he can do about it. He actually is weak in that way. But at least with this, with the egg, there's something he can actually do. You know, he can actually prove that he's not weak, that he actually can make a difference. I wonder what's gonna happen to the king. Callum, did you talk with dad? Couldn't. Say the word and I'll go back into that tower with you. Wow, that's amazing of her. We have to return this egg. And find its mother. We could change things. Do you think dad will be okay? He has the finest guards in the kingdom defending him. Yeah, of course. They're all even thinking that the king is going to die. Which maybe he will. And even if the king survives, that's just the beginning of his problems right now. <sighs> Does that mean the king is dead? Oh no. 
that's the symbol of success, right? Finish this. My pleasure. No. We can find more practical uses for this one. Soren was ready, though. <laughs> he was ready to go. Yeah, King's dead. Is she gonna tell them? What's going on? Something's wrong. No, it's... We should stop and rest soon. They're gonna find out sooner or later. Wow, that episode's so dramatic. Wait, does that mean the advisor is gonna leave now? That's not great. The king is dead and Ezrin's gone. Who's left? And now all three of them are gonna be hunted because they have what's most important for so many different interests. For the humans who want leverage, for the, the elves and I guess other magical creatures or, or dragons or whatever that want it back for themselves. And you have Rayla who's now a traitor, sort of. I don't know if people will figure that out, but man, there's a lot brewing. So I guess next episode, we hit the road, which is crazy. That was a really great three-part launch of the journey. One thing I'm relieved about is I already feel a great deal of positive regard for the characters. I really like the feel of Ezra and I like Callum. Rayla grew on me a lot more in this episode. And of course I love Soren, my boy. But it's gonna be weird now because Soren and Claudia are that dude whose name I just can't remember, the advisor, his kids. And that worries me because right now one of my favorite things is the Soren Callum relationship. So that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. So that's episode three. Hope to see you guys very soon for episode four.